Hey, how, how you guys doing? Doing I good. Guess, how you doing? I'm good. Hey, I guess first first for, for Trey, you're going to be seeing a couple of teammates on defense and, you know, J Joe Fouché and Greg Brooks. Just um, wondering what you, what you think about those guys, maybe how, how they've looked on film this week playing for LSU. Um, I just want to say those are my guys, man. Uh, been through a lot of, you know, tough times with those guys and um, I mean, they're heck of a, uh, they're heck of players, man. They're they're very very good. I mean, I've been going against them for what for three years now, uh, and then playing against them is just going to be it's going to be you know a little weird, you know, seeing them in another uniform. But uh, you know, just things you know things never stay the same. So uh, just going out there to play my best game, you know, compete against those guys. It's going to be fun, you know, knowing that guy across from you, and you know, going to make a play on a guy that you know. And so, I mean, obviously you, you were in the secondary with those guys and now you have, you know, Dwight's an old LSU guy and land. And how do you think your uh, former LSU now teammates are feeling about playing LSU? And what, what do you think about, you know, Joe and Greg being on the other side? Um, I feel like Landon and um, Dwight, they're both, they're both excited for this game. They're both ready to, um, they're really just excited to go out there and have a big game and play against their old school and um, Joe and Greg, those are still my boys. We still communicate. It's just going to be fun to go out there and compete against those guys. They're both great competitors. Um, we built a bond when they was here for those uh, few years. So it's going to be a real good feeling just to go out there and compete against somebody that you know and that you spent time with and built a bond with. Okay. Thanks, guys. Tom? Hey, guys. In, in the circles y'all run in, um, where would LSU rank in terms of y'all's rivals? Because, like, you have so many. You got trophy games with a bunch. What does LSU do for y'all? Um, LSU, they're coming off a big win right now. So, And that's always been a rivalry game. It's always been a tough game. That's always been close. Comes down to the fourth quarter. So um, being there would just um, check off another name on our list for this season because that's a trophy game, and the boot is very important to Arkansas. So we really want to bring that trophy back for another year for the state. Yeah, Trey, how does how does the rivalry with LSU compare with others? Are, could they could they be your biggest? Uh I, I mean, every game, you know, is important, I would have to say. But I mean, you know, you know how this game means to the to the state and to the fans and to everybody. It's just a it's just a different level of uh preparation and you know playing for a trophy is always big. It doesn't matter who you're playing, but playing for a trophy um, is big. So we're just going in and trying to keep the, the boot here. Yeah. How, Trey, have y'all processed um, the Liberty game from last week? And what's the, what's the mood like on the team? Uh, we just know that we didn't play well at all last week uh, on the offensive side, uh, especially. And, we, you know, we're just trying to put it behind us and get better every day, you know, clean up the mistakes that we had. I mean, we had a lot of TFLs and, and uh, penalties, you know, pre-snap penalties, which you can't have and you can't, you can't win the games doing that. So just cleaning those things up, you know, playing our best ball. Simeon, what's the mood of the team? How have y'all processed it? Uh, the mood for this week just been get back to work. Uh, mind focus on being one and know. That's what our preparation has been like. We know it's a big game coming up. We have a rivalry game coming up. I feel like the mood hasn't changed. We're, we're really anxious for Saturday to come because we want to erase that Liberty game out of our head. Yeah, Trey, how's KJ looking this week? Um, you know, he's uh, a little banged up, um, but, you know, we all are and it's week 10. Uh, we've been playing a lot of ball, I mean, foot and it's football. So guys are, you know, hurt, banged up, um, but he's been looking good, you know, been moving around and running around and just like normal, been throwing the ball well. Um, so, I mean, same old KJ. All right. You had a weird play last week in the end zone, man. Uh, I, anything, what happened on that play? Uh, just the culmination of a lot of, uh, you know, we had bad spacing on that play. Um, corner came off and he made a heck of a play. I got to give him props. I mean, he's on scholarship too for a reason. Uh, he made a play, tipped the ball. Just unfortunate circumstances. But, I mean, I still got to make that play uh, or at least get the ball down and not let it fall in his hand. Okay. Hey, thanks, guys. Trey. Hey, guys. Yeah, I know that um, – I know that – Greg and Joe are your boys and everything, but I just wondered, was there ever a moment where you're just like, no, dude, wait, we need you. Stick around. I mean, like Dwight and Landon left under a coaching change. And, you know, I can understand guys not playing a lot and stuff, but you got guys that are starting for you that leave and, and go to a rival team. I mean, what, what was that like? 
I mean, um, I mean, it hurt me because I had been there with those guys for about four, three to four years, and that's almost my entire college time. And it was times when I uh, I didn't want them to leave for sure because those were my guys, those were my friends, we built bonds. But um, also, Louisiana is where they're from, so it could have been a dream of theirs to go back and play for their um, hometown. So I feel like it was more of just their decision for them to be better. I feel like they made the best decision for themselves. And um, I can't fault them for that. I still love them like my, they my brothers because they still are. But uh, we're definitely ready to compete and go after them. Trey, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, I would just have to say the same thing you know, Simeon said. I mean, Greg and I came in the same class. And so, I mean, we spent a lot of time together on and off the field and competing against each other and stuff. And I, I mean, it, it was a dream for them to play for their hometown school. And so I really, I really can't be mad at them. Um, they felt like that's what they needed to do. They're grown men. So uh, you just got to let them do it. Um, Coach Pittman said the energy wasn't quite what he, what he wanted, just the sideline and, and, and stuff before the game. Did you guys recognize that maybe going back and watching the video that maybe the energy wasn't quite what it needed to be uh, for the Liberty game. And, and both of you guys as, as older veteran players, how do you get that corrected if, if you do feel like that's a problem? Um, I feel like the way you get that corrected is you got to do it in practice. That's something that you got to have each and every single day. You got to be excited to go out there on the field and practice. You can't go out there on Saturday and be excited for a game if you haven't done the preparation for the week. The preparation gets you the confidence to play on Saturday so you can go out there and have fun. So I feel like the only way we can fix that is we go and we prepare way more than we did the last week. You can't keep doing the same things and expect a different outcome. We just have to keep evolving, keep uh, watching film, keep preparing to the best of our ability. Uh, I think another thing is we just got to be able to bring our own juice, man. I, yeah. I think we do a lot of waiting at times, uh, waiting on somebody to make a play or waiting on somebody to do something good that gives us energy. But when we got to be, you know, juice boxes ourselves on the sideline or before the game, um, just getting pumped up, you know, getting in that zone. And I think that we uh, struggle at that at times. And um, just trying to correct that, you know, getting happy in practice, you know, letting the leaders lead. I think that's a big thing that we've been focusing on is letting the leaders talk letting the leaders, you know, bring along uh, other teammates, you know, bring juice and energy to the whole whole team. No, I really appreciate the answers, guys. Thanks. No problem. Scotty? Yeah, Sam, I'm just curious what you've seen from Jaden Daniels on film and then LSU skill players. What what makes their their guys tough covers? Um, Jaden Daniels, he does, he does a great job at keeping the play alive. He's a very great mobile quarterback. He's one of the best ones we played this year. Um, uh, Boutte, he's a great route runner. They have speed out there. They have their receivers are all strong guys. They're strong in the legs. So we're going to have to make sure that we cover them. We got to make sure that we stay glued on to them, especially when um, Daniels get rolling out. We got to make sure we plaster on to our guy and make sure we have good eyes out there. And for both of you, just what, what have y'all thought of the season that Jaden Hazelwood's had to this point? And just what, what's he added to the program since he, he came in? Uh, I think he's at a, just, you know, a different perspective because um, he's been at a school that won a lot of games. Uh, he won a lot of games while he was there and just bringing that winning culture, you know, here um, because we're, you know, we're just new to this. I mean, I'm an older guy and we've had one season of actually like winning and my freshman year wasn't too hot. So just bringing another guy that knows how to win and knows what it takes to win. And a guy that's going to, you know, give great effort every day, no matter how he feels, he's going to go out there and he's going to play his tail off. Yeah, like Trey said, just bringing that energy. He's going to bring the juice each and every single day. He's an older guy. He's a guy that's more experienced. He brings um, – he gives knowledge to the younger receivers. He do a great job at competing with us, making the DBs better. I feel like that's what he's brought. He's brought um, just experience and a whole bunch of knowledge. Bob, wrap this one up. Bob, you're muted. Sorry about that. <laughs> I think I get used to it after three years or whatever it's been. Um, you know, you guys obviously have – I haven't seen the playoff rankings, but LSU is going to be in the top ten, I'm sure, after beating Alabama. And just how big an opportunity is this, especially after a, a tough loss last week? And, you know, and then you obviously get bowl eligible with, with another win too. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot on the line for this game. We want to get bowl eligible this game. 
Uh, we want to bring the boot back home this game. And also we want to beat another rival. So um, it's a lot on the line for this game. And I feel like everyone around the facility feels that. And I feel like that's what's driving us because we know this is a big game and it would be a huge win for us this year. Trey, you got your, your thoughts on that? Uh, just, you know, trying to get a win. And uh, it's hard to win playing in the SEC West. And, you know, still in the game from LSU would be, you know, put us back on the right track, you know, getting us back into the win column, getting this bowl eligible. It just gives us juice to finish out the rest of the season. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Trey, appreciate it, guys.